Four months ago, I lost my husband. I still cannot believe it as I'm writing this because I still feel like he is here with me every day. I'm always hoping that I might wake up tomorrow and realize it has all been a very bad dream. He came back from work one day and after being at home for half an hour or so, he suddenly collapsed on the ground. Of course, I called the emergency number immediately. They sent an ambulance to our house. They told me to give him CPR, but even though I tried, I probably didn't do it properly because I had never learned it before. My husband basically died in my arms. It happened so fast. It was a matter of minutes. The ambulance arrived only to confirm his death. Then the police came too and asked me a lot of questions. The medics took the body away and they told me an autopsy would be required because there was no obvious reason for death. I agreed, of course, even if they hadn't said it was necessary, I would have requested it myself because I had to know why it happened. In my head, nothing made sense because he was just 33 years old, young, healthy. I couldn't imagine any reason that would make him just drop dead. After everyone left, I was in a state of shock. It felt as if I was losing my mind. I cried. I talked to myself, talked to God, even though I had never been that religious. Then I pulled myself together enough to call my mother-in-law and tell her what happened. My mother-in-law has never liked me. From the moment we got introduced to each other, she didn't like me. I had no idea what I did to make her hate me. I had always been polite to her, so I didn't know what her problem was with me. For example, I was never once included in family events like trips away when my husband was alive. She didn't really seem to have any interest in talking to me, and I was given a backhanded comment about being there for my partner when he was going through a tough time because he confided in me and not her. I never overstepped her boundaries and always tried my best when I was around mother-in-law to get to know her as best as I could, but sadly, she never saw my efforts. Sister-in-law was exactly like my mother-in-law. She was cold to me and would ignore me for no reason at family functions. She would even talk over me on several occasions, purposefully ignoring me. My husband noticed this and tried to talk to her several times about it, but she never changed. Whenever we used to meet, mother-in-law and sister-in-law never once asked me about my career, parents, to see how my life was going. Mother-in-law once even called me stuck up and spoiled just because my parents sent me to a private school and she was a public school teacher. My conversation with mother-in-law only focused on her son. I even know she tried to talk my husband out of marrying me and told him to keep looking for a better partner than me. Fortunately, my husband didn't care about her opinion and proposed to me anyway. When mother-in-law found out that he had proposed, she freaked out and called to tell me that I should strive to be the best wife for him and take care of him the way that she has taken care of him all these years. I was a bit offended, but I tried to not take more offense to her words. Sister-in-law never even reached out to congratulate me despite the fact that my husband called to inform her. She only talked with him and refused to even acknowledge me. My husband and I had already decided to pay for our own wedding, so when mother-in-law offered to pay half for our wedding, we declined graciously. This made her even more upset and she started to tell my husband how sad she was that he didn't need her anymore. So to compromise, we told her that we would love it if she wanted to organize the rehearsal dinner for us. She agreed and we appreciated the gesture. However, as the wedding approached, things took an unexpected turn. The night before the wedding, she embarrassed me in front of family and friends, saying she couldn't wait for the wedding stuff to be over and how stressful it had been, even though she did not contribute financially or in any planning. Despite this, we hoped the rehearsal dinner would be a positive experience. When I offered to help, she declined, stating she had it all taken care of. However, upon arrival, it became evident that the preparations were not as anticipated. 
The rehearsal dinner turned out to be a collection of plastic tablecloths on picnic tables and cold Mexican food. During the wedding, she kept acting upset, and it made the whole celebration feel a bit off. She got drunk and started behaving inappropriately with the other guests, so we had to ask sister-in-law to escort her out. My sister-in-law protested, trying to justify her mother's behavior, but my husband stood firm and eventually both of them left together. My husband reprimanded my mother-in-law strongly the next day and they had a huge fight. Ever since that day, both mother-in-law and sister-in-law had as little contact with us as possible. Years passed since we ever talked with them, so when my husband passed away, I had to gather my courage and give my mother-in-law a call to tell her about what had happened. When I told her, she couldn't believe it at first, and then she started to blame me. She was yelling that it was my fault that I killed her son and that she was going to make me pay for it. I never thought that she would support or comfort me at these trying times, but I also wasn't expecting her to react to something like this. I also had tried to inform sister-in-law, but she didn't pick up my call, so I hoped she would hear the news from mother-in-law. The next day, a doctor contacted me and told me that the first results of the autopsy of my husband revealed the cause of death, which was a pulmonary embolism, a blood clot that had blocked the main pulmonary artery. The doctor basically told me that my husband had no chance. I could have done absolutely nothing, and even if the ambulance was right there with us, they could have done nothing too. I got a copy of the results and called mother-in-law again to inform her about the results. She listened to the results and seemed a bit calmer, so I thought she would be okay. We agreed that she would be coming to my house that evening to talk about the funeral, will, and everything. Little did I know what was about to happen. She arrived that evening, but she wasn't alone. She had the police with her. We live in a relatively small town and we only have one police station in our area. These were the same officers who had come to my house the day my husband passed away and had already asked questions to me regarding his death. They remembered me and mother-in-law started to tell them that I was a murderer, that I had killed her son, that I had planned it all. She really thought that they would arrest me with her speech. I remained calm and informed the police that I was ready to show them the copy of the autopsy that I had received earlier. They nodded and I got it to show to them. The police read through the copy and they tried to explain to mother-in-law that it wasn't murder and that her son had died because of a medical condition that no one could have caused. She, in turn, started to argue with them that they shouldn't believe the paper, that anyone can make and print such fake documents these days. The officers tried to convince her as much as they could, yet she continued to yell and create a scene. They were really nice to me. They told me not to worry, and then they left because obviously there wasn't any crime. Mother-in-law was furious about it and swore that she was going to put me in prison anyway. I was not worried about her words because I knew I was innocent and the authorities knew it as well. The next thing we clashed on was the funeral. My husband and I never really talked about death because we were quite young to think about death and we had not planned to die any time soon. However, I remembered that once when we attended the funeral of someone last year, my husband said how he would like to be cremated instead of buried when he dies. And that's what I thought I would be doing. I was going to cremate him. Mother-in-law, on the other hand, wanted to give him a traditional burial, so when she found out about my idea, she started to yell at me again. She was like, Oh, you just want to get rid of my son's body so there would be no evidence against you, right? You've planned everything. Sister-in-law, who was standing nearby, joined her as well and accused me of trying to raise any evidence and planning all of this just to hurt them. I was starting to lose my patience with their cruel words. I stuck by my words and told them that if they wanted to bury something of him so badly, they could bury his ashes. Mother-in-law threatened to sue me, but I laughed because I knew there was nothing that she could do. She even told me how I allowed the hospital to butcher her son, meaning the autopsy. I looked at her incredulously and asked her what she meant by that. I explained to her that it was a necessary procedure to be done, 
The hospital people deemed it necessary and we needed to know why my husband passed away so suddenly. Sister-in-law then started to accuse me of how I would have killed him because of our mounting pressures in marriage. I scoffed and informed her that we were a two-income household with no children, so we had absolutely no tension. I assured her that whatever happened to him was completely unexpected and it had nothing to do with any household stress whatsoever. As if these arguments weren't enough, mother-in-law continued to fight with me over the days for unnecessary things when I was organizing the funeral music, the place, the coffin. She even didn't want certain people to attend and I was like, no, it's a funeral for my husband and he would have wanted these people to be there. Everyone who wanted to say goodbye to him for the last time was welcome and I wouldn't push anyone away. I could see the resentment on her face, but there was nothing that she could do. After the funeral, we had to go and meet with the lawyer to discuss my husband's will. As the lawyer read through the document, it became clear that my husband had left everything to me. Mother-in-law and sister-in-law, however, completely lost their minds. Accusations flew like arrows and they accused me of killing my husband for the money, labeling me a gold digger. I couldn't believe her words. Their reaction was not only hurtful but also completely unfounded. The pain of losing my husband was already overwhelming and their baseless accusations only added to the heartache. She somehow believed that her son would have lived if he hadn't married me, that he died because of the life with me. I understood that she was hurt. She was a mother and she lost her son, so despite all the tension, I had always held my tongue. Understanding that her grief was clouding her judgment, but I didn't deserve this attitude. I loved him too. I told her that it wasn't fair for her to blame me for my husband's death and that I was financially capable enough also so my husband didn't have to leave anything for me but he did because he loved me, so if she and sister-in-law had a problem with it, they were welcome to form their own judgment, but that I wasn't going to sit here and listen to them take out their anger on me. I made it very clear to them that they were welcome to contact me once they had calmed down and understood how ridiculous and baseless their accusations were. Two months passed with neither of them contacting me. This was already a tumultuous time in my life, and honestly, I was just glad that they didn't make it any harder. My parents spent several weeks with me at home because I was too afraid to spend time alone at the house. Every corner of my house reminded me of my dear husband. I had spent countless nights crying myself to sleep. My dad, seeing my state, subtly suggested that I should sell the house so that I could live with them for the time being, and my mom agreed. They were concerned about me, but I didn't want to let go of my house as it felt like the last connection I had with my husband, and I was too afraid to give it up. Last month, out of the blue, my mother-in-law called me, breaking the silence. Surprisingly, she asked how I was and inquired about the well-being of the house. The unexpected call caught me off guard, and I hesitated for a moment. Despite the challenging history, I tried to keep the conversation civil and updated her on my situation. I mentioned the ongoing struggle of adjusting to life without my husband, the difficulty of navigating through the grief and the emotional weight of being in the house that held memories of happier times. Then, out of the blue, my mother-in-law dropped a bombshell. She straight away informed me that my sister-in-law had got married again. I was shocked as I had not been invited, but mother-in-law told me that they didn't want to disturb me as I was still grieving for my husband. I found it a bit odd that my sister-in-law could get married so fast with someone I had never even heard about. My mother-in-law then continued saying that she had decided that since sister-in-law didn't have a place of her own, she had our sister-in-law and her new husband from her third marriage to move into my house. I was taken aback by her demand and struggled to form words. I asked her if she was joking with me, but my mother-in-law went on to say that she was in fact very serious and that sister-in-law and her husband deserved to live together after marriage. But she did not have space at her own house to let them move in, hence she had asked them to move in with me. 
The weight of this announcement hung in the air, and I found myself trying to compose a response amid the whirlwind of emotions that now enveloped me. I explained to her how that this was my house now, and that the notion of someone else moving in with me so abruptly without asking for my permission felt intrusive and overwhelming. I told her that I would be happy to host sister-in-law and her new husband for a few days if that's what they wanted, but I didn't want them to move in with me for weeks. However, my mother-in-law insisted, emphasizing that my husband had left the house to me and since I was now living alone, making space for my sister-in-law and her husband was expected of me as a dutiful daughter-in-law if I still wanted to be a part of their family. Despite my efforts to convey my feelings and reservations, she stood firm on her stance, making it clear that her decision was non-negotiable. The weight of her words left me grappling with a sense of helplessness, despite how much I protested that this was my home. My mother-in-law argued that as a widow living alone, I had the space and resources to accommodate them temporarily. Frustrated and unwilling to engage in a prolonged argument, I was about to tell her if sister-in-law and her husband ever showed up on my doorstep, then I would call the police. But suddenly, an idea sparked in my mind. I knew that living in this house where I had shared countless memories with my husband would be hard in the long run, as it would continue to remind me of my husband everywhere. So if sister-in-law and her new husband wanted to live in this house, they were welcome to do so, as long as they paid their own bills. I also knew that if I told mother-in-law right then about my plan, she wouldn't agree and make an issue out of this as well, so I kept quiet and simply decided to agree to her absurd demand. I called up my parents and informed them of my plan with my sister-in-law, and they told me that they had my back. Slowly, I began to unpack my belongings so I could move in with my parents, making room for my sister-in-law and her husband. Meanwhile, to transfer the utility bills to my sister-in-law's name, I diligently reached out to each utility provider. I informed them of the recent changes in the occupancy of the house and inquired about the essential steps to update the billing information for the bills. I filled out the necessary forms so that they would now be billed to my sister-in-law. When the day arrived for them to move in, I handed over the keys and explained that as a wedding present, they had the entire house to themselves. Sister-in-law was overjoyed and called up my mother-in-law in excitement, who seemed pleased that her daughter and her new spouse could live without any disturbances. Watching them rejoice, I think they both believed that I had given in to their demands and given up my house entirely to sister-in-law. I shifted back into my parents' place and have been living with them ever since. My parents still kept my old room, so it feels nostalgic to be back here. I feel much better here than how I felt back in my house. When the month ended, I think Bill started arriving, addressed not to me, but to sister-in-law. Electricity, water, and other utilities, all in her name. Confused and frustrated, sister-in-law called me, demanding an explanation. It was then that I calmly informed her that since she and her mother wanted to live in my place, they would be responsible for all the bills. You see, before moving out, I had shifted all the bills to her name except for the deed of the house. Sister-in-law erupted in a fit of rage, shouting and expressing her displeasure. She threatened that she wouldn't be paying the bills. I scoffed at her and told her that if she didn't pay the bills on time, she would have to then pay the fines which would be coming in her name as well. This pissed her off even more, and she continued to yell while I smiled in satisfaction. Soon after, my mother-in-law called, yelling at me for daring to charge her daughter for bills. She claimed that my sister-in-law and her husband couldn't afford it as they were almost broke, and that I should pay their bills from the goodness of my heart. I firmly told her that it was never going to happen, and after bickering with me for a while, she announced that because of my stubbornness to not pay their bills, Sister-in-law and her husband were now planning to move out as they couldn't afford to pay for the utility. I told her I would be happy to have my house back and my mother-in-law accused me of being heartless and prioritizing money over family. I didn't say anything to her and she cut the call in anger. The tables had turned and I felt relief at the prospect of regaining control of my home. What was initially a scheme by my mother-in-law to inconvenience me 
had backfired on her and sister-in-law. I couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction knowing that I had not only stood my ground but also exposed the hypocrisy of their demands. However, I do feel a bit guilty and I'm here on Reddit wondering if what I have done makes me an a-hole. Update 1. Thank you to everyone who have shown their support for me. I have been so sad ever since my husband passed away, but reading all your comments and your personal experiences with losing loved ones makes me feel a bit better to know that I am not alone. To answer the most important question that everyone keeps asking on, why I even allowed my sister-in-law and her husband to move in in the first place, it's because my mother-in-law is not an easy person to argue with. She's extremely narcissistic and will do anything to have her own way. I also knew that ever since the lawyer had announced that my husband had left the house for me, she had her eyes on it. My sister-in-law is just a pawn in her play who goes along with whatever her mom wants. I'm sure they thought that when I moved out that I had cleared their way to take over the house and they had not expected any retribution. My sister-in-law and her husband have moved out and she has begged me to pay the outstanding bills as she has no money and doesn't want to be penalized. I have agreed to pay the bills for last month to clear her due and will then change the utilities to my name now that she won't be staying in the house. I guess my sister-in-law has learned a valuable lesson. Update 2. It's been an interesting last week. As you know, since my last update, my sister-in-law moved out of my house in frustration after she found out that the bills were coming to her name. I cleared her dues once I saw for myself that she had genuinely moved out of the house. I have changed all the locks in the house. For the time being, I'm still living with my parents. Two days ago, mother-in-law reached out to my parents in a bid to complain to them about how disrespectful I have been. She had continued to call me and yell at me for what I did to sister-in-law, but I guess she wanted to take it up a notch. She called my mother's phone in the morning to tell her how difficult I was making her life by forcing her to live with sister-in-law and her new husband when I could easily offer my house to them and pay for their bills. My mother, who has known all the antics of my mother-in-law, calmly explained to her that now that I needed to take care of myself first, and she could take care of her own daughter and encourage the married couple to move out and live on their own instead of depending on a widow like me to take care of them. My mother-in-law didn't expect this reaction and tried to justify saying that any good daughter-in-law would have done this, but because it was me, she had to live with such disappointment. My mother retorted that the actual disappointment was her, and her own daughter for expecting someone else to take care of them, and warned her that the next time she ever called me or threatened me, we would go the legal way. This scared my mother-in-law straight, and she tried to say how this wasn't such a big deal, but my mother wasn't having it. Watching my mother stand up for me felt good and taught me that mother-in-law was just a big bully who forced other people to match her expectations. Since then, she and my sister-in-law haven't contacted me and I pray that they continue to stay away from me. I'm also thinking of selling my house so I can start afresh at a new place where my in-laws can't show up unannounced and disturb my peace ever again. Update 3. It's been three months since my last update. I have finally listed my house for sale. The decision to do this hasn't been easy and it brought up a lot of mixed feelings. It was sad to let go of a place filled with memories, but it also felt like a step towards a fresh start. I have been talking to a therapist to help me deal with all the emotions. It's been a safe space to talk about what I'm going through and find ways to handle it. Therapy has been really helpful in understanding myself better and figuring out how to cope. Dealing with grief is tough and every day is different. Some days are really sad and others are a bit hopeful. I'm learning to accept the ups and downs. Having people around me who care has made a big difference. Friends and family have been there for me throughout all of this. It's not always easy, but I'm learning more about myself and feeling stronger each day. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.